Hello, thanks for joining me today. My name's Ken Coburn and I'm going to be doing some poetry exercises with you today. I've called this session Poems That Count because as well as words, obviously the most important thing we need when we're writing poems, numbers can also guide us as well. We count the number of beats in a line, we count the number of lines in a stanza, we might count the number of stanzas in a poem as well. But I'm going to be looking at the numbers one to five today and thinking about how they can help us get started to write poems. As well as numbers, I've also um, gathered some objects to give me something to write about today. Just things that I found around the house. I've got a couple of books on the stand here. I've got um, a pair of sunglasses, a pair of socks, a pair of scissors, a compass, a pencil, a key, a clothes peg, a pebble, a battery, a shell. Oh, and a box of matches as well. I've got my notebook and a pen to get going and the other thing I've got here is a pack of cards. These ones are Hollywood greats and I'm going to be using these to remind us of the number that we're working with. You might like to watch this film all the way through and then have a go at doing some of the exercises that I describe, or you might like to pause after the, the different exercises and have a go at them then. That's up to you. For now, it's probably useful if you have a notebook or a piece of paper and a pen or pencil, either to write as you go along or just to make down any notes, or maybe just to doodle. Sometimes that helps people concentrate as well. I know it does me. So I'll just give you a moment to gather whatever you need and then we'll get started with the first exercise. Right, let's get started with the first exercise, number one. I've got the ace of spades here. On this pack it's Marlena Dietrich. So I'm just going to put that there to remind us we're working with the number one. And for this one, we're just going to start with one word. It can be anything at all, really. We can write about anything. I'm going to get some ideas from the things that I've put out here. And I thought uh, the object that I'm going to choose and the word I'm going to choose is um, this little pebble here, which I found on the beach uh, a week or two ago. I'll put that down uh, I'll put that down here so we can see it. It's quite small, red and white, mainly red with a white stripe through it, and it's about the size of my thumb. I'm going to take a piece of paper, and what I'm going to do is just write the word pebble on it down the way, one letter at a time. like like this, pebble. The kind of poem we're going to write is called a mesostic. You might have come across acrostic poems and there you write the subject of the poem down the side of the page and then your first line begins with a word beginning with P, the second line E, the third line B and so on. A mesostic is very similar to that, except you write the word down the middle of the paper and you need to find words with these letters in them, but these letters on the page already can come anywhere in the word. So the first word we choose has to have a P in it, but not necessarily at the beginning. So what I did was I looked at my pebble, I handled it, and I just wrote down some words that described it and the kind of place that I found it. So I wrote down words like beach, smooth, 
stripe, thumb, white, red, wave, beach combing, tides, foam, cold, released, beached, tumbled, shore. All these ideas. And then I had a look at the words that had the right letters in them. So I needed to find a word with a P in it to begin with. And in fact, the only one that I wrote down there was stripe. I've got two Bs that I need to find words for. So um, I could choose the word thumb or I've got beach or beach combing um, and so on. So what I did was I chose some of those words and then I'm just going to write out the poem here and then I'll, uh, I'll show it to you. It can be quite a frustrating exercise. You can come up with you need six words in this poem. You might get five of them and they all fit well. And then you've got one letter spare and you just can't think of a right word for that. But um, perseverance and you'll usually, you'll usually get here. So I had to have a few goes at this. But this is the mesostic that I wrote for my pebble. And it goes, striped, wave-tumbled thumb, flung ashore. So that's the poem for number one, the mesostic. We just choose one word, write it down the centre of the page, and then try and write a poem around that using the letters in that word, to guide us. Right, I'll just put number one away. I'll put Marlena down here and we'll move on to number two. Two of diamonds here. Two is a number of opposites day and night, yes and no, love and hate. I remember the, the film with Robert Mitchum, The Night of the Hunter, I think, where he has the word love tattooed on one hand and hate tattooed on the other. And I don't know if it was that that gave Edwin Morgan the idea for a poem. It's in this book here, his new selected poems. And I'll put up a link to it at the end. It's a poem called A View of Things. And in this, he just alternates lines, what I love about, what I hate about. And they're quite random things. The first two lines, what I love about dormice is their size. What I hate about rain is its sneer. So just thinking about the qualities of certain objects and what we might love and hate about them. And so I, I had a go at doing that with um, some of the objects that I've got here in front of me. And I started with this compass here and I wrote, what I love about a compass is it always knows the way home. What I hate about a compass is its inflexibility. These matches here. What I love about matches is their flame. What I hate about matches is their habit of disappearing. This little shell. What I love about shells is their peaks. What I hate about shells is their clinginess. What I love about keys is their predictability. 
What I hate about keys is their predictability. You can love and hate the same quality in an object sometimes. What I love about scissors is their dance. What I hate about scissors is their sharp tongue. What I love about clothes pegs is the spring in their step. What I hate about clothes pegs is their unwillingness to let go. And lastly, what I love about sunglasses is their dazzle. What I hate about sunglasses is their disguise. So we could keep the poem like that, a list of alternating love and hate about these different objects, or we could shuffle them up. What I did was I, I took a, a card, a small card like this, and I wrote each of my love and hate um, on them in different colours. I did blue for love, red for hate. And then I, I tore the cards, or cut the cards in half. So I've got a little pile of um, lines of things I love and a little pile of lines uh, of things I hate. And I shuffled them up a bit and I didn't use all of them, but here's a little sequence of, uh, of, of love and hate. Morgan starts with love and ends with love as well. So there is an odd number of lines in his poem. And I started with the clothes peg. What I love about clothes pegs is the spring in their step. What I hate about shells is their clinginess. What I love about scissors is their dance. What I hate about keys is their predictability. What I love about matches is their flame. What I hate about a compass is its inflexibility. What I love about a compass is that it always knows the way home. So that seemed a good note to end on, going home. So that's our number two, thinking of opposites, love and hate. Right, let's put away these and we'll change the card, take away the two and we've got the three of clubs. So we're on number three. Three is uh, quite an important number for any kind of writer. If you're writing a story you would always have to think about it in at least three parts. It has to have a beginning a middle and an end. We're always thinking about the past, the present and the future, how they relate to each other. And another way we break things up into threes when we speak is we use the first person, the second person and the third person. And by that I mean the first person is when we use we or, or I talking about ourselves. Second person, when we're speaking to someone else, we use the word you. And third person, when we're talking about someone or something, we use the third person, he, she, it, or they. So in this, we're going to write a poem using the first, the second, and the third person. Really just a different way of addressing, speaking to, about, of um, a particular person, or in this case, an object. I'm going to choose these rather splendid socks here. I think I was partly inspired in my choice by remembering a poem by the Chilean poet Pablo Neruda. He wrote a book called Elemental Odes, poems about all kinds of everyday objects, like a lot of the ones on the table here. And he wrote an ode to my socks. Again, I'll put up a link 
So you can have a look at that if you would like. But I'm going to have a, a think about these socks. Um, thinking about, as I say, writing about them in different ways. Um, I started um, writing about them in the third person. So writing about them. And because we use socks in plural, I'm going to call them they. And I thought as we're thinking in threes, I thought I'd write three lines for each part of this. So this is three lines in the third person. I'll hold them up again. They are made of wool. They are patterned in stripes of uneven width. They are multicoloured. Blue, red, black, fawn, grass green, pine green. So that's quite a basic description of them. Now you're going to use the second person and actually talk to them. So, you were hand knitted by a friend's mother. You came into being in rainy Argyle. You have retained your colours through many washes. And then I'm going to talk about my experience of them, my feelings towards them. I wear them inside my walking boots. I wear them sometimes in bed in winter. I am warmed by their colours whenever I open the drawer. So we're describing the same object, but from these three different perspectives. We're talking about them, we're talking to them, and we're talking of our own experience of them. So it's, as I say, it's an interesting way of thinking about how you relate to any particular object around you. So that was number three. And we'll move on to number four now. And for this, I'm going to use this object here, which is uh, my compass. Uh, if I just put it down here, so north is just over the shoulder here, south down over towards the window. I'll just put that down beside the, the number four there. There's a poem by Robert Burns. He uses the word Ertz for meaning the, the directions, the points of the compass. And it goes, of all of the Ertz the wind can blow, I dearly like the west, for there the bonny lassie lives, the lass that I love best. So in there, we're thinking about the, the airs, the directions, not just as places, as, as directions in which we find places, or perhaps where people live, but also thinking of the emotions that particular directions bring up in us. Somebody lives somewhere in a direction that we love, we might miss someone, we might have had sad or unfortunate experiences in another direction. A lot of us are, well, we're all locked down just now. A lot of us are spending a lot of time in our own homes. So this is something that you can do in as large or as small an area as you would like. You can do it within the four walls of your room. Just have a look around you and see what's, see what's there. Here with me, I've got a, a blank wall on this side, maybe space to put some pictures up. I've got the print behind me and the door out to the hall. If I look over on this side, I can see a chair and my box of books and a suitcase ready for when I might be able to travel again. And over here, there's the window. I can see the houses and the gardens on the other side of the street there. So, four different, depending which way I, I look, four different views 
different opportunities perhaps as well. Thinking a little bit further, what's outside the house? I, I came up with this, north, east, south and west. North, the town centre, where we keep our distance and shop warily for essentials. East, the bridge where I pause to watch the river flow. South, the forest enlivened by birdsong, the flash of a woodpecker, the whir of a chaffinch's wings. West, the railway station and thoughts of others elsewhere missed. So that's my four airs. What's there? What I do there? How it makes me feel? You can have a go at thinking about your own four airs, travelling as short or as long a distance as you would like. Okay, now let's move on to number five. And the last of our racing exercises. For five, I took as my starting point not a poem, but um, I thought of the five fingers on my hand. And this is a little exercise that I've used at the end of a session when I wanted feedback from people, when I wanted to know what they thought. So a way of doing this that I came across. Uh, thumbs up, something that you liked. Index finger, um, something you'd point at that could be improved maybe. Middle finger, well, something you didn't like very much. Ring finger, um, something you'll keep. And pinky, it's the smallest finger, something that you might have liked a bit more of. So I thought I'd apply that just to the, the objects that I've got here. Um, and so I'm going to start with uh, a thumbs up, this one here, this is a, a guidebook, Dubrovnik and the Dalmatian Coast. I was lucky enough to go there on holiday last year, uh, the publisher's Lonely Planet. So thumbs up for Lonely Planet, memories of warmth and figs picked from the tree. It's pointing something out. Can I point out this battery is flat? Something you don't like so much. Something I can't stand is a blunt pencil. Where's the sharpener? And your ring finger, something you're going to keep. Now we're into May and I'm an optimist. I'll keep these sunglasses handy. And finally, something that you might like more of. We'll go back to our pebble. I'd like more walks on the beach, pebbles slipping under my feet. So that's our exercise number five, thinking about the number five and the five fingers on our hand. Well, thanks very much for watching. And um, that's us come to the end of our five exercises. I hope you've enjoyed watching the film and I hope you'll enjoy having a go at one, two, three, four, five of the exercises and writing your own poems that count. As I said, we'll put up some links to the poems that I've mentioned so you can have a look at them as well if you want. There's just one final poem I want to finish with. It's the one uh, behind me on the wall. I suppose there's a number involved in this one as well. There's 10 phrases involved in that. Um, it actually comes, the idea for it came from an old advert. Some of you might remember an old Pepsi advert from a long time ago, the 1970s. Um, beginning, how did it begin? Lip smacking, thirst quenching, ace tasting, and then a number of other phrases spoken quite quickly until the final word, Pepsi.
And I did a version of that, uh, but about poetry. And it goes like this. Quill dip in blank verse and rhyme scheme and rude dream and sea fair and night walk and ode hawk and heart tune and sonnet croon and muse chasing poetry. So I hope you enjoy your poetry wherever you find it. Bye bye.